We may as well start this overview right here when you open the door that leads into the Lego room. Of course, there's a whole bunch of art that flanks the stairs on either side. You've got the Hogwarts crest there, Mickey and Minnie, Spaceman, Lightning McQueen, Harley Quinn and the Joker, my Sig Fig, the Lego logo right above the huge Brixy like wall sign that used to be mounted to the wall. Hopefully one day it's back up on the wall. That's the goal. Then we've got the Captain America shield, the Dark Knight, Elvis, the amazing Spider-Man, and right across from that, Iron Man. Three of them, and a whole bunch of Star Wars art as well. One of the newest additions to the LEGO room is actually this huge wall panel that's built using 1,800 bricks. And when you walk down, you see Santa Claus, and that wall panel is his backdrop. Up top on these cabinets here, there's a whole bunch of the Star Wars buildable figures behind my entire TIE Fighter collection, which is rather large. It fills the tops of those shelves there and also swings around the corner right by Darth Vader and also Luke Skywalker. This is like the Star Wars corner right here. There's a whole bunch of UCS sets, right? And Imperial Shuttles. Jabba Sail Barge, Snow Speeder, Land Speeder, a whole bunch of them. There's another non-related LEGO item right down here. You gotta have a baby Grogu in the room, right? There you go. There are some other non-related LEGO things at the top of the stairs there, right in front of the sign, which are some Funko Pops as well. But yeah, pretty epic. We got the Star Destroyer, Super Star Destroyer, Venator, Razor Crest. Cloud City, Death Star playset, and a whole bunch of cool sets on those three cabinets. Now we can make our way back there and check out some more Star Wars stuff, but first we've got this really cool ski hill which is custom built. And this is this year's Winter Village. It's got the working chairlift, the chalet, all sorts of different runs. The lights, minifigures absolutely everywhere, some cool stories, the Christmas tree behind the chalet, snow details absolutely everywhere, this little tram which can buzz around the track and go underneath the mountain, and then the actual winter village. There's the Lego sets that have all been modified with the closed backs, and that's the Main Street buildings. So a whole bunch of buildings all the way along here and they're elevated up off the ground a little bit above the skating rink. And also the uh, tree farm or place where you can buy your Christmas tree. And a little fireplace there, a fire pit. And then of course there's Santa Claus's mountain right here. Yeah, so this is the shelving area, which is actually pretty big. There's some Epic sets on these massive shelves right here as well, such as the Marvel shelf. We've got another Captain America shield there. And of course, Groot, the Iron Man Hall of Armory. Hall of Armory? Hall of Armor. And then uh, a whole bunch of other Marvel sets as well, such as the UCS Helicarrier, some Quinjets, another Hulk Buster, some Guardians of the Galaxy stuff, a different Helicarrier right up top there. And that sits beside the UCS Death Star 2. On the next unit, which is beside the Coliseum, those don't really match too well, do they? Then the gunship with my massive army of clones on either side of it. And the UCS Millennium Falcon above that. And the Concorde and the Grand Piano above that, along with some other sets on the top there. Pretty epic ones though, such as the Boeing Dreamliner. We may as well finish up with the shelves. We're just going through this quickly here, but holy cow, there are a ton of sets. We've got all the Technic vehicles right here, the supercars. And on the side of this cabinet, there is the Galaxy Explorer and also Benny's spaceship. Mounted those using command strips. The same command strips which actually hold up all the art as you come down the stairs as well. Those things are just beauties. 
Then the entire Speed Champions collection right here, spanning all the way across our vehicle shelves, because included in the vehicle shelves is also all of the LEGO Creator Expert vehicles like the James Bond, Aston Martin, Ferrari, Porsche, the rebrickable model of the Countach, Corvette, Mustang, Fiat 500, some Volkswagen stuff, the Mini Cooper. And then we move into Batman sets. We've got the Bat Cave right down there. The little mini Batmobiles. Tumbler, two tumblers. The 89 Batmobile and the 89 Batwing. And then some other Batman sets up top here. A couple more Batmobiles. Along with the insects. Some flowers behind the brick sketches. And then our Disney shelf. Along with some dinosaurs. And the Ghostbusters Act-01. The Slide Wally. Typewriter. DeLorean. Some more Batmobilia stuff. And the Batcave Shadow Box. One thing I will say is that this walkway is a little bit tighter than I would want it to be. But I wanted to expand the diorama showcase, which is this whole span right here. You can sort of see how big it is. I wanted to expand that. And the only way I could do that was by running this cabinet through the center of my room. Sort of a big change that happened this year, but I'm pretty happy with it just because that Winter Village looks pretty sweet. Over here, we've got one of my favorite sets of all time. It's the UCS Imperial Shuttle beside Chewbacca. And then the two UCS X-Wings below that. And the justifier on the ground there. Built a custom Technic display so it can actually be sitting at that cool angle. You can see some books right down here, some Lego related books. And some Harry Potter stuff. And then some miscellaneous sets like the Tiger and the Minions. Some Mario stuff. The Mario question mark block. NES. Bowser, which is an epic set. Beside Pac-Man. And some more miniature Disney stuff right here on this shelf. All of the brick heads, which are on custom built displays that I built using black brick. And they take up this entire cabinet, which is one of the narrow Billy bookcases. And they go right down to the ground. Tons of brickheads. Now this is even tighter than the last hallway that we were having a look at. I decided to stack these tables this year, which was a bit of an aggressive move, but at least we can fit more cool stuff in here. And that actually helped free up the space to uh, add the diorama tables, which are behind me. Speaking of dioramas, there's some Star Wars dioramas right there, and also Indiana Jones on the very bottom. And the course on guard gunship and the ghost, and the UCS ATAT. -AT. With some more walkers above that. And some more ATAT -AT walkers over there. A whole horde of them. I love my ATATs, because it actually got me into collecting Lego. It's the first set I ever had. Some Millennium Falcons, the Spider Tank, the N1 Starship, ATM-6, Y-Wing, UCS. A whole bunch of other stuff like the Star Destroyer, Razor Crest, some other Mandalorian stuff. And then we have all of the buildable characters right here. The newest one being Chewbacca, which we saw beside the UCS Imperial Shuttle. There's some smaller stuff up top there and then I mentioned that the TIE Fighters actually wrap around the corner so that's where they end right there and then the smaller Star Wars shelf right here with all of the smaller sets like the Micro Fighters and some of the other starships. This is like my little uh, nook right here and it's funny when you look down right here underneath the ski hill you can see the massive Cat D11, some random holiday stuff, some more brickheads, and also some more sets right there that should be in the Winter Village. There's another Elf Clubhouse and another Gingerbread House. And then, of course, we have the bulkhead shelves as well. You can see some boats and postcards on top of that one there. The Flintstones 
and some Majesto stuff right up top here. And then some random stuff above the city. And there's actually more Technic right over here on top of this bulkhead as well. Around the city, there's a whole bunch of epic sets, such as the Ninjago City stuff. All sorts of boats and pirate ships. The best boat of all, which is the Titanic, right? A huge art set to my left here. The biggest set of all time. It's the world map. Whoa. And then on the far wall, we've installed these shelves this year as well, where we've got some Avatar stuff. The random nutcracker beside the uh, Statue of Liberty and Eiffel Tower. Some massive castles. Castle Fortificata, which is an alt build of the Colosseum. All the space stuff. Some more ships, like Bowser's ship, the Viking ship. Stranger Things, the Upside Down. The Arkham Asylum. The Disney train station, the Royal Clamshell, Mickey and Minnie. The Globe, Optimus Prime, Jurassic Park Gate, along with the T-Rex, the Disney Castle, and some epic sets, such as Rivendell, the Hogwarts Castle, the base of the Gringotts Bank, the Tower of Orthanc, and then all of these cool sets, which are actually right above my desk. We have all of the helmets. The entire helmet collection. Oh, there's a new Spider-Man one coming out as well. Yeah, that's going to look pretty cool. Then you got the uh, Hogwarts Express. Beside the Wooden Duck. The Orient Express. And above that, the Eldorado Fortress. The Viking Village. The massive Bricker Builds Mandalorian helmet. Vincent Van Gogh and also the Crocodile. And all of this stuff. Is right by my huge parts inventory. And the spot where all the magic happens. The build table. And above that is my minifig collection. Which is always sort of changing. But there's some ones that have been here for quite some time, I guess. But there's always new minifigures coming out. And they sort of cycle on and off of this wall here. Some pretty great ones, that's for sure. So I wanted to start this tour with the shelving just because I feel like the city deserves its own little overview, but I, I haven't started a Lego room overview like this with the shelving in a very long time. And I think that was a good place to start just because it featured so many epic sets, right? Yeah, pretty excited about the shelving here in the Lego room. Like, I don't know how many sets are on display on those shelves, but I think it's quite a few. I've sort of lost count at this point, that's for sure. So now that we've taken a detailed look at that, why don't we take a look at the LEGO City? You know what? I wanted to start this LEGO City tour off with my trains because check it out. We got the super long high speed passenger train making its way around on the elevated train track. And then we also have the yellow and blue LEGO City passenger train making its way around on the ground line. Not only that, but there's another train right here. And that is the Hogwarts Express going around the amusement park line. Not very often I have all three trains fired up at once because it can become a little bit chaotic. But let me tell you, when they're all going, it's pretty cool, right? Not bad at all. My favorite train of all time is definitely this one here. It's the first train that I ever had and I just love it. I actually have two of them. I modified it so that it can be six cars long. And it's sort of like double-sided and it just zooms around the raised line beautifully. This one here does struggle a little bit with this corner specifically just because there is some flex track there. It's going around a corner and also it's going uphill. The reason it goes uphill is because it transitions onto the road from my ballast lines and the ballast lines of course are a little bit higher. Also it has that strange corner there that it sort of struggles with just because there's that pillar in the room which supports my house, right? And that's why I've tried to disguise that pillar with the use of Lego bricks in the past, like the very colorful Lego bricks. 
And now I've actually started constructing this skyscraper. And during the time of me filming this video, that skyscraper is yet to be completed, but I think it's looking pretty good. So yeah, all three trains going in the city, right? Not too bad, feels pretty sweet. I dig it. It's amazing. One day I wouldn't mind upgrading to maybe a nine volt system. I think that would be pretty sweet just to have maybe like one line on a nine volt system so you can have these things constantly going around the Lego city just because the consumption of batteries and switching those batteries and continuing to make sure that they're fully charged is actually for some reason quite the task for me. I don't know why, but it is. And I just feel like nine volt would remove that headache. But there we go. Trains zooming around the city. What a great way to start this tour. One of the newest additions to the LEGO City is the Central Park. This was introduced when we had the layout change and I integrated the Avengers Tower, which sits behind Central Park. This is the Tranquil Garden set integrated right into the park. The bonsai tree, all sorts of trees and flowers around this walking path, which actually goes around this custom built fountain right here. And in the very back, we have the Botanical Garden. And then, of course, behind that, there's the Ghostbusters HQ and the Avengers Tower, which just look brilliant. I love the fact that this layout gives those buildings so much breathing room. One of the most popular attractions in the LEGO City is the amusement park, where we have the doubled up Disney castle, Tinkerbell flying through the air there, Mickey and Minnie greeting you at the castle, and all of the guests sort of standing around, having a great time by the fountain out front of these little shops there, and maybe heading on the Ferris wheel. There's also the Disney train, which is currently out of commission. Well, it operates. It just can't fit through the train station which services this area, and that is the Studgate train station that can be seen in the background there, right beside the Disney castle. Just has to be modified in order to give clearance to the Disney train. There's also the park entrance right there with Mickey flying above. A little green space right here and also a Lego City train station which services both lines. Well we've got the trains going, we've got the Ferris wheel going, I may as well fire up the mixer as well which sits on a custom built platform with the washroom right below. You can walk through the Disney castle there. Go on the loop coaster if you so choose. Grab a bite to eat. Get a picture with one of your favorite Disney characters. Maybe go on the Ferris wheel. Walk through the Haunted Mansion. Go on the Haunted House drop ride. Or go on the original Lego roller coaster. There's definitely lots to see in the amusement park. Keep in mind that I pretty much have content on everything that you see in this room such as doubling up the Disney castle, adding the moat around the base of the Disney castle, building the palm trees, building the hedges, tiling off the entire amusement park, building these little custom builds. Everything that you see in this Lego room essentially has its own video. Just outside the amusement park, we have my doubled up boutique hotel, which is just a monster. It's a double corner build that sits beside Assembly Square. And on the end of the street, we have Sesame Street. Around the corner from the boutique hotel, we've got my doubled up jazz club and also the Disney costume shop. And across the street from that is the sit complex where some of our favorite sitcom characters reside. Beside that is the Lego store, which is custom built. And then of course the Monster Fighters haunted house. Once again, the Avengers Tower, Ghostbusters HQ. And right across the street from the Ghostbusters HQ, is the doubled, not quite doubled, but it's the Sanctum Sanctorum that's more complete. It's a full 32 by 32 base plate. That sits beside the diner. And on the end of the street, there is the construction site. And there's also the detective's office right there beside my double pet shop. I skipped this whole block though. It's a pretty magical block where we have the brick bank and also the Grand Emporium, both of which actually had an additional floor added to them this year, which is pretty exciting. I'm still waiting on some windows 
uh, to make those colors look a little bit more consistent. We also have the Gringotts Bank, which was added to the city recently as well. I think it looks pretty sweet there beside the 12 Grimwald Place facades. And on the other side of the street here, we've got uh, some more facades, which cover up the other uh, backsides of Diagon Alley. Uh, we got the uh, uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's, 101 Dalmatians, and also Full House. We can also have a look in Diagon Alley just by poking in here, where you can see all the magic that's happening within the alley. Now there's also the hospital. This area is probably gonna get updated relatively soon because I have one and a half base plates open right there beside the hospital. I plan on doing something pretty cool with that. Uh, what that's gonna be, I haven't quite decided, but the hospital might get a, a slight movement, like I might change the position of it, and then I'll use that space for something else. Pretty excited about that though, and it's gonna be one of the projects that I uh, tackle here in the near future, probably maybe wrapping up 2023 or going into 2024, because once again, I still need to take care of the base of this here, which sits right beside the water, which is just lovely, and right across the street from Town Hall, where you got a fountain, some custom-built trees, some half base plate modulars on either side of that, one of the newest LEGO City editions, which is the Natural History Museum, and that sits beside the Parisian restaurant. Gotta watch my elbow there. This thing's still giving her. <laughs> and then we also have the uh, fire brigade on this side. Uh, this is the donut shop. So that's actually half of the police station or a quarter of it or a third of it, but I actually doubled it up and made it a 60 by 32 stud modular building. And then there is the palace cinema on the end there and the bowling alley, which has a custom built parking lot can see this from a different angle when I stand in this little access point right here. That's how I reach the far parts of the Lego city. And there we have the Palace Cinema and also the bowling alley parking lot. And on the back side of the bowling alley is the farm, which actually has a little walk through right there. And the water running through. And then a new custom modular building that I built using the tuning shop or tuning workshop. Built that into a 32 by 32 modular building. And then there's also the Birch Bookshop beside the university. I really dig this modular building here and I'm excited to fill this base plate. I don't know what to put there yet. I haven't quite decided. But there's some other familiar faces down here as well. We've got the Quickie Mart, the Simpsons House, this epic castle, the burrow, some skyscrapers, and also the Home Alone house beside the mansion as well. Look at that. We've got a massive mansion under there. Who remembers when that was on the diorama table? That was quite the project, and I can't wait to get those back in the Lego City one day. Wouldn't that be epic? I think so. Got some townhouses right here. Also a bakery. And then another project that I'm still working on, but it looks pretty good from the exterior. That's the doubled up downtown, which is actually a Lego City set train station right here if you want to board the train as it comes flying around right here past the mountain. And then there is the double tall corner garage right there beside another part of the police station which is the city press and of course the massive Daily Bugle which sits behind the Ghostbusters HQ. Some more buildings stretching along the back here that press up against this roller coaster. We do have the wall though that separates the amusement park from the Lego City. And across the street there is the Octan gas station, the massive police station, there's the main part of it, and then this nougat skyscraper which sits beside the Avengers Tower. It's always a pleasure crawling through here because look at all the spare parts that we have ready to go, ready to be sorted, right? And then also, I get to see all these sets every time I crawl through. It's like, yay, more Lego, even when I'm crawling. <laughs> we got Lego everywhere. <laughs> and then you pop up and you're like, yeah, cool. Look at the farm with the water. And the Venetian house is just across the way beside the school and also some of the residential buildings. Yeah, residential is still in the city, which I'm happy about, right? You've got like the modern family home, 
the classic three-in-one townhouses, Fort Privet Drive, which has been completed with a garage. I love these red roofed ones all grouped together. They look pretty cool. They got the skate park right over here, which is by the beach. Another parking lot. This classic 1950s diner, which I would love to eat at one day myself. And then we have the campground. All sorts of trees in here. Now this is an area that I've been thinking about recently as well. And I think there's going to be a change that is going to be made to this area. And it's nothing negative. It's going to be uh, for the better, I think. I'm just thinking of maybe integrating some sort of mock in this area. Because we have some Lego sets, all sorts of Lego vehicles, a huge amount of uh, custom landscaping that makes this area look pretty good. The tree house, also the A-frame cabin, even more landscaping, the creek running through, a little fishing pond right here. But I think it needs some sort of custom structure. So I might be doing that sometime. Although with that said, there is a custom structure sitting on top of the hill that was actually built by Simon. It's his own little uh, build. He wanted to, to work while I was uh, away on vacation. So he's like, yeah, just come on into the Lego room and build whatever you want. And then he built that. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. But I think we need to add one or two more. Over here, we've got the Ninjago Mountain. And I believe this is all new, 2023. I did the Ninjago Mountain, finished up the campground, and also built this entire zoo in 2023. Maybe it was in the tail end of 2022, actually. I can't quite remember, but a lot of this was finished this year. It'd be crazy to go back and actually look at like what I was able to achieve in one year, because it has actually been a lot. Like if you go back and watch one of my Lego City overviews, like this, like I've been filming these for a long time, but if you go back and watch one from like a year or two ago, you'll see that there's just a crazy amount of changes that happen each year. Like this mountain right here and that set on top of the mountain is brand new. All of the stuff along the back there is all brand new as well. Well, I guess I should maybe change my definition of brand new because it's within a year, which is still relatively new, right? But yeah, we've got the airstrip, the eight studs house there, the little airstrip shack, the forest hideout, and some epic sets such as the castle, and over there, there's the medieval jousting. Which continues on to the horse stable, blacksmith, and then Hocus Pocus. All right, so, so far so good. I'm thinking the city looks pretty fresh. We've got the amusement park, the perimeter with all the medieval stuff, and the campground and the zoo and those mountains. Then we've got the central park, all the modular buildings found throughout. And one of my favorite places that we haven't talked about yet is the zoo. Uh, the zoo, the zoo is one of my favorite places, but we already talked about it. It's, <laughs> sorry, the, uh, the beach, I love the beach, it looks fantastic. We've got all these little mini modular buildings here uh, that all have different shops within, or restaurants as well. But if you wanna get a skateboard or a surfboard, you can come here, you can grab that, or if you wanna rent a bike or go on the little Ferris wheel or go to the washroom, then you can come to the beach and you can take care of all that business, which is pretty exciting. You can also go to the old fishing store, maybe rent some fishing supplies or buy some fishing supplies. You can go for a nice beach walk or for a nice swim. You can go skateboarding. You can do some cliff diving if you'd like. You can also go in the cave and there's actually a hidden cave inside there. That little hill project was actually pretty neat. Something I took care of this year as well. I loved all the little details inside. It's too bad we can't get in there and see them, but they're definitely there. I just have to pop the top off so you can go in there. But there's sort of trees and stuff all over it. It's concealed in there. Speaking of that, actually, we didn't talk about the other train station and the dungeon when we were going over the uh, raised platform there. There is a little bit of hidden detail in the platform coverings. But I love the lighthouse, the sailboat, the dolphins, and just the activity happening here at the beach. But how do I skip over this detail? Like you can come right in here and take the train. A little bit hard to get in here, but there's also a Starbucks right 
in there. So nice little detail, that's for sure. And then there's even more detail in here where we have the dungeon. I definitely like the platform coverings and was glad that I was able to add some detail inside the platform coverings. And also something else that I think happened this year, maybe at the tail end of last year, was the entire raised train line. Like it's not no ordinary Lego set. I built all of these train supports, put them on the road, reinforced all the train track with plate and also tile. And now, as you can see throughout this video, that high-speed passenger train just loves it. Like it's just right at home. It's cruising around. <laughs> it definitely makes me pretty happy. And once again, that is for sure my favorite train of all time, just because it's so easy to use. It doesn't give me any trouble. And it just seems to be happy going around the track constantly. Don't you die on me now. I've just said so many good things about you. <laughs> but it's definitely my favorite train. And I love seeing it go by all of this cool stuff. So everybody, there we go. That wraps up my full Lego room tour for the end of 2023. What a year it has been and I cannot wait to see where 2024 is gonna take us. I've been working on something super special like super special and I hope that plan comes to light here in 2024 because I'm having so much fun with my Lego room and it pains me to remove things like the Simpsons house, the McAllister's house, the mansion or anything like that from this city or from the displays. I just want to have more. And <laughs> so maybe in 2024 we're going to get more. I've also like slowed down on Believe it or not, I've slowed down on acquiring display sets for my shelves just because I've been focusing on the city and there's not really a whole lot of room in this room to display stuff in a neat and tidy way how I would like to do it. But either way, I'm having so much fun with Lego and with building my city as well. I'm just thinking to myself, how epic would it be if we had room for all of those things I listed off and also maybe a train yard, a medieval area, the winter village, uh, a boatyard, a larger ocean, and more buildings and just like everything. Maybe more landscape, maybe a larger farm, maybe more mountains. Like, how epic would that be? Also, how epic would it be if I could actually walk around the entire city and actually gain access to some of these areas that are really hard to reach because in some cases it's a 40-inch reach and I don't have a huge reach. But either way, I'm like super happy with the progress that I've been able to make in 2023, it's pretty epic. And I wanna give you all a huge shout out and a huge thank you for all of the support and just all of the, the viewership as well. And just say thank you so much. It has been an incredible journey. And I know so many of you have been here for it and been encouraging me along the way. And I, and I wouldn't have been able to do it without you. So thank you so much. I am blown away, to say the least. It's, it's been a fabulous journey, and I can't wait to continue it. Hey, actually, you know what? I want to try one more thing before we sign out. So I filmed this using my new camera, and I didn't try out the wide-angle lens that it also came with. I don't know what it does yet. We're going to find out together. So there's the shot right now, and here goes nothing. Oh. Uh... Boom. Whoa, it le whoa, that's cool. I made it wide. Oh, maybe I should have been filming with that. Isn't that neat? Hey, you want to hear something funny? The little train that could died right there in the last clip. Thank you so much for coming on by. Please remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff coming out in the very near future. And have yourselves a fantastic day. Farewell.